Hey everyone, welcome to the live stream. It's time for another episode of Measuring Dev Skills with Code Signal. Today we have a bit of a different one. You'll notice right off the bat, we're not looking at an IDE. We're not actually looking at any specific questions. We're not actually really on the Code Signal platform for this episode. We're here to talk about something a little bit different. So Specifically, it's the, the general coding assessment framework that we want to get into, as you may have guessed from the title up here. Uh, we're going to talk about what that is, but before we get into the details, we're going to talk about sort of the rationale behind it. Um, so imagine you're trying to get something like uh, a bank loan, right? In order to assess whether that loan's going to be repaid, whether they should actually give you the money, uh, they're probably not going to use something like a piece of paper that you wrote listing some of your achievements, right? They're probably going to go with something a little more standardized, like a credit score. And so it would be nice if the same sort of thing could be applied to a technical interview situation, right? Our, what we're getting at is that a resume is a bit of an outdated tool for measuring technical skills. Now, you might say, well, that's fine. At our company, we use... Uh, a, a technical test of some sort, you know, maybe you give some sort of programming question as an assessment to see whether the candidate is qualified. So again, that, that might work, but we've sort of talked about some of the downfalls of that as well on some previous episodes. Again, we wouldn't want to give someone, for example, a test that involves implementing Dijkstra's algorithm if that really has very little to do with the actual job. Um, you might also imagine, let's say you're interviewing for a position and they say, okay, great, we'll have someone uh, come by and pick you up in our company car. You're going to love it. We built it ourselves. Unless you're interviewing for Tesla, you might not have a lot of faith in that. You might think, uh, is this thing going to pass an emissions test? Is it going to get me there safely? Is it even going to run? And we might have the same types of concerns for uh, an in-house kind of technical test. We want some sort of standardization uh, for this type of thing. We also want to make sure that it's uh, free of biases, that is EEOC compliant. And again, biases are something that can sort of sneak their way in, even if we feel like we're pretty conscious of it. I, I mean, I remember hearing an anecdote about, I think it was an IQ test or some other type of standardized test where it was a question that basically showed a bowling alley, but with no pins in it. And it said, what's wrong with this picture? That seems pretty innocuous, but for someone who's from a place where they don't have bowling, I mean, that's a pretty unfair question, right? So we want these things to be free of bias. Let's get into the details. We'll take a look at uh, how this is structured and uh, how it sort of avoids those kinds of pitfalls. So the first thing to note is that this is a framework. We're not just talking about a one-off type of interview question that someone could then post to Glassdoor or Stack Overflow or some other spot like that. It's a framework of questions. So by following this framework, we could generate a very large pool of questions that avoid those kinds of possibilities. So in terms of what's actually within this framework, there are some technical details. So for example, it's three questions, it's 60 minutes. And again, um, note that this is a research paper, right? So Going back to this example, we want to leave it to the experts. We want to leave it to the folks who have done the research, who have gone through this. Uh, you could use your own technical test, but why not leave it to the experts at making these technical tests? Anyway, the point is, so through research, what was found is that 60 minutes is kind of a, a Goldilocks zone, so to speak. It's enough to get the user engaged, enough to get a, a meaningful signal out of them without that big of a toll on, on the candidate themselves. Two to three hours would probably be a, a bit too long. Uh, and it wouldn't necessarily give that much of a, uh, an extra signal in terms of how the candidate's doing. Okay, so three questions. Again, this is also based on research. Uh, the idea is that in terms of what makes a, a good candidate, in terms of what makes a, a technically qualified candidate, there are three main things that the assessment looks at. Um, these are just some details, by the way, on the coding score, which has to do with the results. And again, that's where the, the parallel to something like a credit score comes in. We can take a look at those a little later. Uh, but the main thing is that if we're looking at the tests themselves, so the first task is something that's basically just going to assess 
the fundamentals? Do you speak the language, right? Are you familiar with the vocabulary of programming? So basic string manip manipulation, working with numbers, arrays, that kind of thing. So this is one of the things that I think is most powerful about the framework. This idea of things that the task can include and specifically, more importantly, I would say the things that it should exclude. So this is the sort of thing that's gonna help ensure uh, that it's free from the kind of biases that we talked about before. We don't want any barriers to entry for a candidate that would prevent them from demonstrating their technical ability. So for example, if we're just trying to see, you know, do they know how to work with numbers and strings and stuff like that, we probably don't want anything that involves like some sort of pattern and recognition or problem solving, any knowledge of algorithms, that sort of thing. Uh, the second task, or actually, sorry, we might as well look at an example just to get a sense of what types of questions would be in an assessment like this. So given a list of words consisting of lowercase English letters and a complex word written in camel case, check if the complex word consists of words from the given list. Okay, so a fairly straightforward task, but again, the idea is to sort of assess whether the, the candidate is able to work with the basics, the built-ins, the fundamentals. The second one is where we get into uh, more technical details. This is one that's basically an implementation task. So given some set of instructions, are they able to implement that? Um, so again, an example would be given two strings, merge them with a specialized type of merge function. So again, it, it tells you specifically how to do the task. And it's just a matter of you taking that, uh, you know, English language set of instructions and putting it into technically written code. The third task is where we actually get into some problem solving where, you know, we're aware of what the problem is but uh, it doesn't say specifically how we actually have to solve it. So this is where we're assessing uh, some more problem solving kinds of things. But again, we want to avoid things that are like brain teasers, you know, lateral thinking kind of things. We want to avoid the kinds of things that avoid specialized algorithms like uh, oh, Dexter algorithm, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, but this is mainly a problem solving type of thing. So those are sort of three main areas that have been identified as sort of cornerstones for technical ability. So all of these allow us to get a, a meaningful coding score that give us some detailed information about the candidate's abilities. We can take a look at sort of what each of these ranges represents and, and how it indicates how qualified they would be for the job. And that's basically the result that we get at the end of this standardized assessment. Now you might be looking at this and thinking, well, okay, you know, that's great, but this is kind of like, this is language independent, right? We could do this with whatever language uh, we want. Hopefully I remember to mention that, but the main thing is that this is based on sort of general computer science concepts. If we wanted to get a little more specialized, we could talk about rather than the general coding assessment framework, we could talk about something more specific like a JavaScript core assessment framework. So the idea is that rather than looking at just like, oh, problem solving, the basic language features, we're talking about specifics here. We're talking about callbacks, scope and hoisting, exceptions, promises, things that are very specific to JavaScript. So again, we're getting right into the technical details, the technical ability that we would want the candidate to possess. So one last thing I just want to mention about both of these things, the, the general and the specialized coding assessment frameworks. Again, these are backed by research. You can read the paper if you want to look at the details. Uh, and these are patent pending. So this is a very specialized tool which will hopefully revolu revolutionize the world of uh, technical assessments. All right, I think that's all I wanted to say about this. Thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you next time.